Hi there, I'm Justin and I'm working on Foundation. We are building the first factory on the moon. So self-replication is the hallmark of life. And our vision is to build infrastructure in space at massive scale using self-replicating robots. The road to self-replication and a sustainable business will be long though, but we have a plan. Let's give some context first. Transport within the solar system is virtually solved. NASA is going back to the moon by 2024. And that means we must now industrialize space. But how do we do that? Well, first, let me tell you how not to do it. All the business models that involve producing something in space and then selling it on Earth are bound to failure due to transportation costs. A better business is selling products to setters on the moon, things like shelters, oxygen, and food. The products needed by setters have an interesting property. There's a lower bound on their price and is their launch cost. Even if you assume that building an oxygen tank on Earth is free, setters will still spend millions of dollars to bring it to the moon. Bootstrapping space manufacturing starts with selling products to setters that have been made on site using materials found there. And that's precisely what we're planning to do. If we can sell our manufactured products for less than their launch cost, we have a viable business. All right, but how do you actually build in space? Well, on the left, this is one of NASA's manufacturing stack. It involves more than 100 different processes. We need to come up with something simpler that won't lead to costs similar to Apollo's. We have identified a chemical process and a manufacturing technique which together can become a universal constructor. This is the foundation mark one, our answer to the hard problem of on-site lunar manufacturing. It's, it is an earth-based proof of concept. All right, here's how we see foundation in about six years. Our manufacturing machines will have been tested and deployed on the moon alongside setter spaces. We will have built pieces of their supporting infrastructure like the tanks you're seeing on the render. Long terms, it becomes very, very exciting. In about 15 years, we will close the manufacturing loop, allowing us to build our robots and machines on the moon too, instead of sending them a step closer to self-replication. This will lead to an exponential growth and thus becoming the most valuable company in the solar system. We have been moving very, very fast in the last six months. Right now, we're building a machine that when fed with artificial lunar dust can print the extracted metal into small objects. This will be the very first demonstration of an end-to-end -end system that goes from lunar dust to useful products. And we should be done by Q3 2021. Our team has extensive experience in manufacturing, aerospace, robotics, and AI, and we are currently raising a seed round. Thanks. That's amazing. Uh, that's amazing in so many ways. So I guess the, the first question is, I mean, how do you turn this into a viable business that doesn't rely on outside capital for 10 years before you can even start selling the product? I'm just curious how you're thinking about that. This, this is a very good question. So first, our plan is we will basically rely on people that have money and that have ambition to build bases on the moon, right? So like, as I said at the beginning of the slides, uh, of the slide deck, if we can sell very heavy products for less than their launch cost, it is economically very attractive for them to just buy these from us instead of like shipping them there. But long term, what we want to do is we want to basically expand the kind of things we can produce in space and then do something with those. So either uh, we can go into the direction of producing electricity in space and beaming it back. But I think the, the most exciting thing we can do if we can build in space is start building spaceship outside the gravitational field of Earth. Because if you don't have to ship them, you can build gigantic, gigantic, gigantic spaceship around the moon. So that's the first thing we will do. And then we want to go to, to Mars, basically piggyback on SpaceX's uh, ambition there. Gotcha. Is there something you can do on Earth that is, um that allows you to have like a viable business, even, even if it's something yeah. selling to SpaceX or NASA, just so you can keep the, the capital flowing. Exactly, yes. So this is just like capital for 10 years. Yeah, we, 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 we thought about that a lot and it's actually huge, like it, it is very hard. So something you can do is basically we, we're hopeful that NASA will fund us if we have simple chemical processes that are packed in a box and are space proofed so that we can just send those uh, on their mission and they acquire it and they own the, the output. And we can start with that. Um, but if, if you mean basically trying to exploit our technology on earth, the very difficult thing is that manufacturing uh, processes on earth will be very different from the one in space. And so it's very hard to find an overlap in the, in the diagram between things that are useful in space and things that are useful on earth. Because everything has been so optimized on earth that it's almost impossible to compete with the manufacturing processes here. Yeah, I was thinking things like, you know, are there inhospitable places on Earth where it might still make sense to, to mm -hmm. I don't know, yes. like, can you go to the middle of the desert and, and or, you know, can you go to yeah. Mongolia, like places where you don't have infrastructure yet, um, but you might mm -hmm. have very similar challenges yeah. and there are ways to make money. 
No, that makes sense. What we wanted to do would be to have this kind of like seed box that we would ship to developing countries and that would kickstart their manufacturing. That would be amazing, right? But the, the very difficult thing is space is actually, especially the moon, it's amazing for that kind of projects because literally the lunar dust is 30% metal and you just have to like process it and you have free stuff. Uh, deserts are mostly silicon. So apart from building mirrors, you can't do much. So it is actually very hard to find a place where you have all the materials you need around you and you can do something very similar. The cool thing is if like some of the chemical processes we work on and some of the additive manufacturing techniques we work on can scale, we will probably maybe like license some of the technologies on earth. But in terms of like having a very clean solution that allows you to deploy this thing on earth first, we have explored that quite a lot, but it's, we didn't find any significant overlap. Gotcha. Fascinating. Um, and when you think about like how much capital do you actually need to, to make V1 of this happen on the moon? Like how much do you have to raise to, to even get this shipped? So, so we have a budget um, to have V1 on earth. So on earth, you have this thing called artificial lunar dust. And it's basically the closest thing you can get to lunar dust if you don't steal the Apollo samples. So basically if we can prove that you can feed this thing in like the input of the machine and outside you get a tank, then we, we've pretty much won on earth and we can raise more capital. So building that, Right now, we, we estimate it will cost us between three and 10 millions to go through the research and stuff like that. In space, the problem is we don't have any prices for the moon yet. Uh, Starship wants to bring those down to a, like a reasonable amount, but I think it will take at least more than half a billion to go to the moon. Wow. But it's very hard to say now because even SpaceX doesn't know how much like bringing one kg to the moon will cost. What's the, you think, the impetus for people to actually build the bases on the moon? Like, you know, we went there in the 70s and mm, then yes. stopped. So what, mm. what's different this time around? Like, why are we actually going to colonize the moon, do you think? So the axiom, the kind of, like, the only thing you need to accept is true without proving it is that we want to build a sustainable civilization on Mars, right? We want life to be multiplanetary. And if you accept that, then going to the moon is the perfect workout to learn how to build, collaborate in deep space before going to Mars because it's much closer. You can shoot rockets there every day. You only have a two seconds delay. It's basically the perfect playground before going to Mars. And I think this will be the biggest driver of people building bases on the moon. That's one thing. The second thing is there are a lot of rare metals on the moon. And so entrepreneurs could show up there and be like, actually, we will, build, we will make prop land on the moon or we will mine helium three that is actually useful for fusion on the moon. But the single biggest driver in my opinion is just learning how to live in deep space. And so how, how much are you guys raising to, to get to this next step? Uh, we're not very comfortable discussing this in public okay. right now, but, uh, <laughs> but happy to chat about it in private if you want. That's super cool. Yeah, this is, I love that this is so, um, it's so ambitious and you know, it's, it's so different than what you normally see. It's, uh, you know, really applaud you having a big vision yeah. here. Thanks for the insightful questions. It was great. Thanks, Avichal. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Avichal. Um, very timely, of course, to have this presentation today out of all days. Um, as Boom uh, Supersonic does their rollout, which Avichal is, of course, an investor in from very much the early days. So I think we both remember someone not unlike Justin coming to us with a PDF, right? Um, not really knowing what they're doing. And lo and behold, now it's rolling out of a hangar. Awesome. Thank you both.